Hi guys. This is D. Igorotech. Today, I will show you how to install and how to use the latest version of Team Viewer. Team Viewer is an all-in-one solution for remote support, remote access, and online meetings. It allows you to assist customers remotely, work with colleagues from a distance, stay connected with your own devices, or assist friends and family members. Let's begin. First is we are going to download and install the latest version of Team Viewer. Open your web browser. Search for Team Viewer download. Choose the first link which is from their official website. From here, you need to choose which platform are you going to install the application. We have the version for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, etc. Since I'm using Windows then I'll choose Windows. During the time of this recording, the current version is 15.45. If you prefer to install the older versions of Team Viewer, then click on See Previous Versions. Since our goal for today is to install the latest version, then we're not going to choose this option. Now, scroll down. Look for Team Viewer Full Client. We have the option for 64 bit and 32 bit version. Windows 11 only have 64 bit version. However, if you are using older versions of Windows then check what is your operating system type. Click on it. It will automatically download the executable file. Let's check the downloaded file. The file name is Team Viewer Setup followed by System Type. Double click on it to install. We will simply use the default installation process. Click Accept or Next. It will now proceed with the installation process. Notice the shortcut icon automatically created on desktop. Tick the box to accept then click continue. Wait for it to complete the startup process. At first, you will see the error, no connection. Just wait for it to connect to the internet. So here we go, here is the dashboard, it's totally different from the older versions. Although we can switch to the old layout if you prefer, I will show you later. For the latest version, we need to have an account to create new session or to remotely access other device. Although you can remote other devices without an account as long as your partner provide you with the session code not the Team Viewer ID. Take note that Team Viewer ID is different from session code. If you want to switch to the old Team Viewer interface or classic layout then you need to disable the new interface. Team Viewer needs to restart to take effect. Click Restart. We have now switched to the classic or old interface of Team Viewer. You can also see the Team Viewer ID and password from here. This older version have few features unlike the latest one, they added a lot of new features. If you want to switch back to the new layout then simply enable the new layout at the top. Team Viewer needs to restart. Click Restart to proceed. Now, we are back to the new interface. If you want someone to remote into your device then you need to share with them your Team Viewer ID and also the password. However, for the latest version, they cannot remote into your device if you are not logged into Team Viewer. You must log in first then only they can remotely access to your device. If you already have a Team Viewer account then simply log in. If you don't have an account then you can create new one. To create an account, click create one here. Enter your first name and last name. Next is the email address. Make sure you enter a valid email address because you will receive the activation code from there. Click continue to proceed. Next is the password. You need to enter a complex and secured password. It will not accept simple password. Use a mix of alphabetical and numeric, a mixture of upper and lower case, and special characters. You can click on the i logo to verify your password. Tick the box to accept the privacy policy. Click Create My Account. Now, you need to verify your account. It has been sent to your email address. Open the email account you used to sign up. You should have received this email from Team Viewer. If you haven't received any email then refresh the page or wait for some time. Now, tick on it to open. To verify your account. 
you need only to tick on Verify Account. Now, your account has been securely verified. You can now log in to Team Viewer. Let's go back to the Team Viewer application. Tick Sign in to Team Viewer. Enter your Team Viewer email address. Click Continue. Enter your Team Viewer password. I want to permanently log in so I will tick Keep Me Signed In. Tick Sign In to proceed. You can read these Team Viewer new features if you want. Click Continue to proceed until you finish the tour. Now, click Launch the new Team Viewer. We are now logged into Team Viewer. You can also see your Team Viewer ID and password from here. At the left, we have the toolbar. Let's go to Home. Here, you can create your own profile. You can upload photo, add Team Viewer contact, set up up remote access, enable two factor authentication, etc. At the right, you can see your Team Viewer ID and password. Below is where you enter your partner ID. We don't have this option if we're not logged into Team Viewer. At the top right, under your profile. Here, we can see we are using the free version. Our account status which is online. You can change to away, busy, or show offline. You also have the option to edit your profile. Tick go to admin settings and you will be redirected to your team viewer account on the web browser. Upgrade plan if you want to buy the license. Lastly, sign out if you want to sign out to your team viewer account. Now, we will remote access to my other computer. For us to do that, we need either the team viewer partner ID and password or the session code. First is we will use the partner ID. Let's check my other computer. Notice that I'm currently logged in. Again, you need to be logged in then only your partner can remote access to your device. If you are not logged in then you can see the message incoming connection and it's taking too long. After a while you will encounter the error, reason, unknown. I will log in again to the team viewer. Let's go to home. Again, you can see the team viewer ID and also the password. You can click on the circle logo to generate a new password. Later on, I will show you how to configure unattended remote access as well. Now, we will copy or take note of the ID and password. These are the details you need to share with your partner or the person you want to remote access to your device. Let's go back to my other computer where we just installed the team viewer. First is make sure the team viewer is ready to connect or online. Enter the team viewer ID of the device we want to remote access. Make sure to enter the correct details. Now, click connect. You can see the status is connecting to partner. Wait for it to connect. Sometimes it will take a minute then only you can see the password window. Enter the remote team viewer password then click log on. We are now connected to the remote device. Let's check the features. Under Actions, we have the option to leave note. This is very useful if you want to leave a note to the remote device. We can also lock the remote device, lock on session end and sign out on remote computer. We can also remotely reboot the remote device or reboot in safe mode. We can send Control alt delete to the remote device. Another interesting feature is we can check remote system information. All the basic informations are here. We can see here the computer name, device boot time, processor, operating system and version, device hard drives. Lastly, the network card, device IP address, subnet mask, default gateway and the bandwidth. We can also remote update the remote device team viewer. In my case, team viewer is up to date. Under view, we have the option to change the display settings. By default, it's set to best fit, you can change it to scaled. Or you can try original. This depends on your preference. I usually leave it to best fit. We can also change the display quality. By default, it's set to auto select. You can choose different display settings if you prefer. We also have the option to change the screen resolution. This will auto detect the optimized resolution. 
however, you can change it if you prefer. Next is the wallpaper, if you notice the remote device wallpaper, it's just black, it's because the wallpaper is hidden. We can disable hide wallpaper for us to view the remote device's actual wallpaper. Next is communicate. We can activate whiteboard. This is very exciting. We can use this feature if we are presenting something or if you're having a demonstration. You can write, draw or type text using this feature. You can also show participants. This is if you are having a group or team meeting. Enable computer sound if you want to hear remote device system sound. Next is the file and extras. We can do a file transfer. Locate the file you want to transfer to the remote device. Take on it to select, on the right window which is the remote device, choose where you want to save the file. Now tick send. Notice that it's already transferred to the remote device desktop. Let's refresh the remote device desktop, you can see the file that has been transferred. You can also see the notification at the bottom. One file received successfully. We can also view the dashboard. You can view all your device status and information from here. Next is we can take a screenshot. Now, choose how to continue. You can save the screenshot, copy to clipboard or cancel. Let's choose save. Locate where you want to save the file. Give it a name based on your preference then tick save. Let's go back to my computer. You can see the screenshot that we just captured. Next is we will check these shortcut icons at the top. These are the most common used features so they created shortcuts for user convenience. The first one is the dashboard. This is where you view all your device status and device informations. The next one is if you want to send control alt delete. Next is the file transfer if you want to transfer files to the remote device. We also have the shortcut to reboot the remote device. The next one is to remote update team viewer. At the top right, we have the shortcut to activate the whiteboard. Next is the shortcut for full screen mode. Tick again to exit the full screen mode. The next is to collapse toolbar. This is to hide the toolbar at the top. Tick it back again to expand the toolbar. The next one is to end session or if you want to stop the remote session. Click the down arrow and we also have the option to end session or end session and lock remote computer. Let's end the remote session. A window will pop up. It tells you that team viewer sessions are free of charge for personal use. If we go back to remote support, you can see the recent connections at the right. Next is I will show you how to set up unattended remote session. Let's go back to my other computer or the remote device. Just so you know, the team viewer ID will not change. It's permanent. However, the password will change every time you restart the application or if you generate new password. We need to set a permanent password then you will use it to remote access anytime and anywhere as long as the remote device is online. This is what we call unattended remote access. To do this, go to settings. Choose go to this device settings. Choose advanced settings. Tick open advanced settings. Under advanced, scroll down and look for personal password. You need to enter a very complex password. It will not accept a simple password. Use a mix of alphabetical and numeric, a mixture of upper and lower case, and special characters. You need to confirm your password. You can see it's acceptable. Now, click OK to save the changes. Let's go back to my other computer where we installed the team viewer. We will try to connect again but this time, we will use the unattended remote access in which we will use the permanent password we just configured. Since we are going to connect then let's go to home. Let's enter the team viewer remote ID again of the remote device. Click connect. This time, we are not going to use the team viewer password. Instead, we will use the unattended or the permanent password we just configured. Click log on. Starting remote session. And now we are connected. Next time we are going to connect, we are not going to enter the password again because we use the unattended or permanent password we did not use the team viewer password. We can test by restarting the remote session. 
let's end the remote session. Now, let's try to connect again. The unattended or permanent password has been automatically saved so we will just click log on. You can always use the unattended password even if you want to connect from a different device. And again, we are connected. Next is I will show you how to use the session code. Under remote support, choose create a session. Click continue. Click continue again. We have now the session code. You can share this code to the person you want to have a meeting or remote session. Click on the share button. You have the option to copy session link. Copy code. Copy invitation and share via WhatsApp. You can also invite via email. Click save. Now, the session is ready. Let's go back to my other computer to test. Let's open the team viewer. Notice that we are currently logged out. We are not logged into team viewer. Let's enter the session code which we created on the remote support device. Now, click connect. Waiting for your supporter to start the session. If we check the remote support device, we received a pop-up. The user is waiting for you to start the session. Choose start session to proceed. Now, from the other computer, click join session. And now, we have a remote session. Let's end the remote session. If we go back to the remote support computer, you can see that the session has been saved. It will expire after 24 hours. You can cancel the session by clicking on the three dot sign then choose cancel session. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.